Okay, the question is about oxidation numbers. Now, first of all, there is a table in your book. <clears throat> it's table 4.5 on page 147 that lists the rules for oxidation numbers. Um, usually, oxidation numbers will match their charge. Like, uh, like if you're talking about sodium chloride, what's the charge of sodium and sodium chloride? Well, it's plus one because sodium's in group one. Therefore, sodium has a plus one oxidation number. Okay, this is just a plain old monoatomic ionic compound, right? Because you got a monoatomic cation and a monoatomic anion. So this was a plus one minus one swap and drop. So that's the oxidation numbers. Um, it gets more complicated when you're dealing with polyatomic ions, like on um, number eight on the chapter four connect. So first, num that one gives you peroxide, um, hypochlorite, and chlorate, okay? So I'm gonna work on these first because they they follow the rules, if you will. <clears throat> so, how I do these, like, let's work here first with hypochlorite. Hypochlorite, there's a Cl, and there's an oxygen, an O, and the sum, see, I put a little plus in between, the sum of the Cl and the O equals negative one. It equals negative one because that's the charge on it. Okay, now, in a polyatomic ion, we always know what the charge of O is. We always know the O is minus two. So I'm gonna rewrite this, and I'm gonna substitute negative two in for the O, okay? Now I'm gonna solve for chlorine. Chlorine's plus one, because see, I gotta add two to both sides, that gets rid of it here. I gotta add two over here, that gives me plus one. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with chlorate. Cl plus O, but see, this time there's three O's. Up here in the first one, there was just one O. I just didn't write it. Okay, so chlorine plus three O's, it still equals the overall charge. Now, had this been a negative three here, we would set this equal to negative three. Same thing, O is always minus two. So I'm going to plug in the minus two for the O. In this one, chlorine's plus five. <clears throat> what you will find on polyatomic ions, um, I mean, whether it's nitrate, sulfate, whatever, the O's are always minus two. Whatever they're with, it always has a positive oxidation number. Now, I saved this one for last because this is actually the peroxide ion, and it's a weird one. <clears throat> it's just an exception. And so that's why I started you off telling you table 4.5 on page 147, because it'll tell you that the oxidation number for O in peroxide is negative one. So that's really, it's one that, we've memorized, if you will. But you can kind of see that because there's two O's and they total negative two, so each O must be minus one. But really, I mean, that one is just kind of, you memorize it. It's kind of an exception to all your other rules. As far as your transition metals and what are their oxidation numbers, um, it's interesting. When we're in class, I always point this out. Um, in your book, here, look this way. There's a table. Give me a second. I know it's rustling. Okay, I think I took a clear shot. Well, you can tell it's a periodic table at least. Okay, in your book, there's a periodic table. This periodic table, other than zero, right? Because anything, if it's by itself, can have an oxidation number of zero. This table shows all the other oxidation numbers. And what you'll find, see, in group one, they can only be plus one, okay? Unless they're by themselves. Like if you have sodium metal, right? If you put sodium metal in water, for example, 
that'll make sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. In this case, see, this sodium is zero oxidation because it's by, himself, by itself. The sodium on the product side is plus one. But we can see that's the only thing sodium can be if it's not zero, okay? But what, what I'll point out here is the transition metals are everything. They're just a lot of choices. Even when you get over here to your non-metals, there's so many different choices for oxidation numbers. We don't memorize those. I don't memorize those. I go through this process every time. Okay, kind of set me up a little algebra equation. Sometimes with the transition metals, it's actually simpler, simpler because in the specific one that you asked about, I think in your question, um, no, you didn't ask about this one, but I'm going to use your example from number one. AgCl. Okay, you know that this is an ionic compound because it's a metal and a nonmetal. You know the charges were swapped and dropped. Now, Cl, you know, has to be minus one. If Cl is minus one, then that tells you, even though Ag is a transition metal, that tells you what Ag is. Ag is plus one. Okay, in this example, doing oxidation numbers, what's the oxidation number for Cl? Again, it's minus one. It's a group 17 element. If it's minus one, what's the copper? If you think about your swapping and dropping, like the one here came from the charge of the chlorine, the two here had to come from the charge of the copper. Okay, so the copper is plus two. It's just kind of a reverse swap and drop, if you will. Another way you could do this one is like we were doing the hypochlorite and the chlorate on the other page. You could say, well, there's one copper and there's two chlorines and together those total zero because there's no charge here. So it's understood to be zero. Now of those, we know what the chlorine is. We know it's minus one. Solve it and we get plus two. So that way it'll work as well. It's just easier to do the reverse swap and drop. Okay, let's see. Okay, the other question you had was chapter three connect number nine. And it asks to calculate oxygen molecules. Okay, oxygen molecules is gonna be O2 molecules. Okay, because molecules is two or more atoms chemically bonded together and to calculate the number of O atoms, okay? And now, um, this question is really a question about understanding uh, your conversion factors and your terminology, okay? Your atoms and molecules. It Honestly, it's not a really useful question for practical chemistry and for research chemistry. But it is, I mean, it's important to understand the difference between atoms and molecules. So, to do the molecules, um, we would take the 29.3 grams of oxygen. Of course, we'd convert it to moles. 32 grams is a mole. And we know that a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And you'll have to forgive me, I don't have my calculator. So we're gonna get a number there. Um, but whatever number you get, that's oxygen molecules. Okay, if we want to know the number of oxygen atoms, we need to multiply it by two because it's O2. And that number is the number of O atoms. Okay, and now to try to drive, point, drive home the point of atoms and molecules, look, I'll, I'll do this when I'm lecturing. I'll say, all right, um, there's a parking lot and there's a dozen cars in the parking lot, okay? Now, a dozen cars, we know that's 12, right? We don't even have to think about it. And so that's how we need to think about mole. We know a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, but we don't say that. We just say it's a mole or it's two moles or it's half a mole or whatever. Okay, so we've got a dozen cars. Um, that's the molecules. How many tires are there? Okay, forget the spares because we don't get, I'm not trying to trick you. Okay, a dozen cars, we know there's four dozen tires. 
right? Because every car has four tires, but there's 48 tires. Okay, that's the difference between like molecules, if you will. This is 12 cars and atoms, what makes them up. Okay, so let me pause and then let me look at your next one. Okay, chapter four, you would look at an activity series, okay? Um, if I asked you something like that, I would provide you with an activity series to look at. Now, do you know how to use the activity series? Um, I think there was a video on that, but I'm gonna do that lecture here. Kinda, sorta. Okay, so we're, we're gonna use the activity series from the book. And remember, these reactions only happen one direction, okay? And it tells you on your activity series, see the wrong color, see the little arrow over here? Increasing strength is oxidation, okay? So what that means is that stuff up here, like if you have lithium, and you put it in a solution of some of this stuff down here, okay? It doesn't matter. Um, let's put it with some lead something. Let's put it in some lead chloride, okay? Lithium's gonna oxidize. That's what this arrow tells us, okay? This is its unoxidized form because it's its elemental form. You know that it has a zero oxidation number. So what's gonna happen here is the lithium is gonna replace the lead. Okay, that's not balanced. Um, now it is but the lithium replaces the lead. And I kind of simplify this. The stuff at the top will displace the stuff at the bottom. Okay, so it's really about fine, it's all about the metals, right? And in this example, it's okay, where's the lithium? Where's the lead? See, stuff at the top will display stuff at the bottom. Um, on the one you asked about. Again, you're right. You would have to have an activity series. Cobalt and barium iodide. Find cobalt. Find barium. Will cobalt replace barium? No. Okay, the next one is 10, and you may know how to do this. I think your question might have just been about what do I do without an activity series? Um, 10, copper, yes. And I always tell my students, when I was in high school, I had Miss Nancy Brown, and she had us learn this activity series. So I actually had a song to it. That's how I learned it. But she was awesome. I mean, sometimes we say, that teacher made us learn that. But she was outstanding. She is why I do what I do. Okay, see, um, that one won't happen. But look, on this one, I, I put this one on my campus students. I would put this one on the test and ask them, will it happen? And then I tell them, look at it and think about it and tap into that. It's tap into that common sense. Okay. This is salt water. If you put silver in salt water, and you've probably got silver earrings, maybe a silver bracelet, maybe I'll even have silver flatware at your house. If you go swimming in the ocean with your silver earrings on, they're not going to oxidize and just disintegrate. You know that's not going to happen. I mean, now, it's silver will tarnish, yes, but that's something black on silver is silver sulfide. It's something completely different than what we have here. So don't forget about, don't get so wrapped up in the elements and the compounds and the activity series. And I, I know it's easy to do because the question is all about the activity series. But you can look at that one and know that you can put silver in salt water and nothing happens to it, right? You could put 
copper in salt water and nothing happens to it. So hopefully that helps.